Hello and welcome to the Giving Voice to Depression podcast, produced in partnership with the A.B. Corcor Foundation for Mental Health. I'm Terry, the creator and co-host of this podcast. I've lived with depression most of my life, and I know how easy it can be to feel all alone in the experience. I'm not alone, and you aren't either. And I'm Dr. Anita Sands, a licensed clinical psychologist and life coach with a number of my own diagnoses, all of which bring a certain amount of anxiety and depression along with them. There is great power in shared experiences. We share our own as we engage in intimate and candid conversations with our weekly guests, exploring different perspectives on and experiences with depression. We keep it real because depression is real. We keep it hopeful because there truly is hope in spite of what depression tells you. Hi, Terry. Hello, Anita. So today's episode is going to be a little different. We're going to be talking about the spoon theory created by Christine Miserandino. Since she first blogged about it, the theory has spread like wildfire. It has been translated into Spanish, French, and Hebrew, and has been featured in magazines, newspapers, news segments, and podcasts across the globe. Christine no longer does interviews on this topic. Probably because she is conserving her spoons wisely. Oh, you are so right. But she does encourage people to share and to use her idea. So we're going to read excerpts from her blog and from other people's interpretations of it, applying it to depression and mental health. And we're going to discuss it ourselves because we think it is that helpful of a tool. So, Anita, you live with chronic illness. I live with depression. So we'll be coming at this from different and the same, overlapping certainly, perspectives. But explain the spoon theory for us, because I know you use this as a tool in your life regularly. Absolutely. I think it's one of the most helpful. I credit it to, you know, being able to get the things done that I get done and and do it sustainably. That's that's actually the the most important thing. Spoon theory and using spoon theory is like a self-pacing strategy that allows you to become more and more mindful of how much energy tasks take from you. And so that you can plan accordingly, you can make better decisions, you find yourself hopefully in fewer positions where you've run out of energy completely and you're, you're burnt out and not even able to take care of yourself, much less, you know, take care of other tasks. So kind of in a nutshell, Christine was trying to explain to a friend of hers how lupus impacted her ability to just do the kind of daily tasks that other people don't even really have to think about. They just do it. She has to think very carefully before she decides what she's going to do each day. So it's sort of like she starts the day, opens up a cutlery door. She's only got, you know, 20 spoons, say, to work with that day. And a spoon is equals like a unit of energy. And so she'll think about a a task like um, a small task like showering, getting dressed might equal maybe one or two spoons, you know, and and again, the, the amount of energy it takes for each person to do any particular task is unique to that person. And the day. And the day, and yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. What's your level of pain that day? What's your level of depression that day? The illness, all of it. Mm -hmm. So smaller tasks will take fewer spoons. Larger tasks, like you know, cooking, meal planning, vacuuming, you know, driving, working, meeting up with people, you know, those kinds of things will take more spoons. So yeah, you're right. It just depends on the day. Uh, some days, even a very small, small task like getting up and getting out of bed might use up a lot of your spoons. Mm. And so in spoon theory, it doesn't matter how much still needs to be done during the day. Once you've used up your spoons, you've used them up. Like your car running out of gas. It doesn't matter if you're only three quarters of the way home. It's right. about having limited resources and the resources energy in this case. So if you've only got X amount. Right. Once you use up X, yeah. yeah, that's right. So people then are left, you know, do I go to this event and, you know, that my kids are really looking forward to, but then I won't have the energy to make dinner. Mm-hmm. So then people have to make, you know, choices about what am I going to do about this? Or, you know, I might be able to do, get this task done, but I have to put off laundry. 
Hmm. Like there's no way laundry can, can be done. And, you know, it's just sometimes people will even push themselves and borrow spoons from the next day. But that's not a sustainable strategy. Right. You could do that in a pinch, but that means you start out the next day instead of, say, with 20 spoons, you started out with 15. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read from the original blog just so I make sure that we sort of have the basis for this. Christine wrote, and again, this came spontaneously. She was trying to explain mm-hmm. to a girlfriend of hers while they were out to lunch why she sometimes isn't able to do such things. And and just to add in, this girlfriend wanted her to explain. Yeah. This, this is what was really nice about the story is that she said, what is it really like for you to live with this? She mm-hmm. really wanted to know. Mm-hmm. And so Christine really had to think about it and then came up with this on the spot. And I thought it was just brilliant. It is. And clearly other people do because there are posters and products. And people who call themselves Spoonies. Spoonies. Oh, interesting. Who have adopted this as, yes, I'm a Spoonie. This is how I live my life. So we will be linking to the website, butyoudontlooksick.com. But I'll read from her original blog post. Christine wrote, I explained that the difference in being sick and being healthy is having to make choices or to consciously think about things when the rest of the world doesn't have to. The healthy have the luxury of a life without choices, a gift most people take for granted. And I have to say that when I'm not in a depression, I do. Mm -hmm. I wake up every morning, I take a shower, I have a cup of coffee, I may or may not make breakfast, I get dressed. I don't think twice about that stuff. You're not even using any spoons, maybe. Yeah, right. (laughs) But I'll tell you, you know, the idea of a shower when I'm in a depression is a very different thing. She continues, most people start the day with an unlimited amount of possibilities and energy to do whatever they desire, especially young people. For the most part, they don't need to worry about the effects of their actions. So for my explanation, I used spoons to convey this point. I wanted something for her to actually hold, for me to then take away, since most people who get sick feel a loss of a life they once knew. If I was in control of taking away the spoons, then she would know what it feels like to have someone or something, and in her case it was lupus, being in control instead of yourself. Yeah, so that was the, her visual for, you know, here's here's X amount of spoons, and now what do you want to do? You want to get up, you want to shower, you want to fix something for breakfast, you want to get dressed, you want to go to work. You want to interact with your coworkers. You want to open up your email. You want to respond to them. And each time she was taking Mm -hmm. spoons away. Mm -hmm. And and again, if you had 20 spoons, you have a whole lot left still to get through the day. If you started with 10, you don't have anything left. You're going to be lucky if you can get through your work day, running on fumes, get home. Do you have the energy to do all of the things that we say is important for self-care home maintenance, you know, exercise, meal preparation. What happens if you've got kids, pets, significant others, people depending on you? Yeah. Where do those spoons come from? The reason I so respond to this theory is that it gives us a way, gave her a way, it was the the whole idea of it, to explain to people who aren't experiencing what we are a little bit of what it's like. It's like, if there's a finite thing and you can explain it in something as absolutely basic and relatable as a spoon, mm-hmm. you have written to me, Anita. I have said, do you want, can you this, this, this? And you say, I don't have the spoons. Mm-hmm. You, you've literally written that to me. And yes. I think, oh, that is like, I get that. <laughs> like, you know, I say I don't have the bandwidth. I just don't have the energy. My plate is overflowing. Those are all a little less concrete. So mm-hmm. I just want to quote one more time from Christine's blog, original blog post. She said, it is hard. The hardest thing I have ever had to learn is to slow down and not do everything. I fight this every day. I hate feeling left out, having to choose to stay home or to not get things done that I want to. I wanted her, her friend, to feel that frustration. I wanted her to understand that everything everyone else does comes so easy. But for me, it is 100 little jobs in one. That's such an important point, right? Because just taking a shower, there's a lot of steps in that. Ever since that night, I've used the spoon theory to explain my life to many people. In fact, my family and friends refer to Uh spoons all the time. It's been a code word for what I can Uh and cannot do. Once people understand the spoon theory, they seem to understand me a little better. But I also think they live their life a little differently, too. I think it isn't just good for understanding lupus, which is what Christine had, but anyone dealing with any disability or illness. Okay, so 
So when I think about how, you know, how does, how does somebody who's battling very, very severe depression think about this? Mm. Okay, we've got, you got maybe five spoons when you're, when you are, have vegetative severe clinical depression. So we're talking about you don't have the ability to do the kinds of things that, you know, we know would make you feel better, you know, like taking the walk and, and getting outside and calling and talking to your friends. Sort of like the the previous podcast episode that we did cereal for dinner. Mm-hmm. We have to kind of go back to the basics and what we're looking for are low energy, low barrier self-care tasks. Things that hopefully take almost no spoons, almost none, maybe half a spoon, you know, to reach next to your bed where you keep your medication and bottles of water and take your meds. Right. And wipes to clean yourself. And mm-hmm. wipes. Yes. You got your hygiene station there. You've got your medication and your wipes. You've got some um, protein bars. You've got a bag of apples. You've got, you know, bananas. You've got something there so we can get some, some food into you that doesn't require preparation. And nourishes you. Yeah. You just, you can't ask yourself to do things with spoons that you don't have. Right. Um, I still think that that low barrier things that allow our brain's neurons to fire a little bit without getting overwhelmed is really good. So music, connecting with people without having to use energy. So p- listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, documentaries, feeling like you can be a part of people's lives without having to respond. Mm-hmm. Because again, responding to people takes spoons that you may not have yes but needing to not feel like you are all by yourself where you are in this depression is important so those are the kinds of things that i think take smaller pieces of spoons so that maybe with with just the five that you got that day we might be able to get meds get hydration get a little nutrition a little hygiene a little social connection yeah you know if we could open up the blinds that might take getting up. You may not have the spoon for it. In that case, leave them open, you know. Yeah, I'd much rather that you wake up to the sunlight and they're, and they're open all day. That's much better for your brain, mm. for the hormones that you get light coming in. So uh, I just leave them open. Uh, leave them open when you go to bed. <laughs> I get open. that. Unless there's a safety yeah. issue. Unless there's right. a safety and security right. issue, privacy. leaving your blinds open. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for privacy issues. But yeah, so so again, what we're looking for always with you know, with this is making good decisions based on how many spoons you have. This is the problem always when you have an invisible illness of any kind, you're going to get advice from people who have no idea what it's like, and you don't look sick from the outside. So they'll say, just do this, just do that. Not recognizing you're operating on a completely different number of spoons than they are. So you don't go take a walk. You don't go exercise and, and do something and use up all of your spoons. You don't say, you know, somebody says, well, just declutter your space. You'll feel so much better. And so mm-hmm. you start, you know, pull, pulling everything out. And now everything's out on the floor. You don't have the energy to do anything with it. And now you feel mm-hmm. even worse. Mm-hmm. You don't do things until you have the energy. So you just focus on the essentials, the basics of self-care. Get the neurons gently firing and feeling supported still feeling connected, nurtured, and little by little by little, we start seeing the improvements. Once we get a few more spoons, which we can do if we don't waste a bunch that we don't have, we can do something else. We could do some gentle stretching, or we might be able to go and move from the bed to the couch. We might be able to move from the couch to sitting outside and get some sun, you know, but, but it's, it's in gradual, gradual steps. That's the reality of it. I'm going to, pardon the page turn here, I am reading from Adam Weitz, W-E-I-T-Z, who is the founder of Sad Runner, and he wrote The Spoons Theory and Depression, and says that both he and his wife have depression, and they use the spoon theory. Mm -hmm. And he said, one of the benefits is that they give themselves more grace. And I'm going to read, quoting from him now, he says, when you look at your day and you realize you only have a few spoons to work with, You can give yourself a bit of grace. That's what you were just saying, from the bed to the couch, from the couch to outside. There are times when I can't do something or deal with a subject in conversation. And I used to think it's because I was a bad person. Now I realize I just don't have the spoons for it at the moment. Another point he makes is improved communication. 
He writes, quote, My wife and I use the spoons theory to communicate efficiently. If one of us says we're running low on spoons or we don't have any spoons left, the other immediately knows to tread lightly and to help make the situation lighter for the one running low on spoons. Yes, it works very well. And the things that you learn to practice when you use spoon theory is self-compassion, boundaries, assertiveness, and getting creative with solutions. So you're absolutely right. If I'm having a relapse of chronic fatigue, I can work, but I'm not going to be able to work and come home and there's going to be no food prep. Mm -hmm. I just need to be assertive and communicate that. And my husband has absolutely no problem. I'll pick up something, not an issue. So you have to set the boundary. I don't have the spoons. You need to communicate that. You need to be really clear. And then I think the most important thing, if you got depression, is you can't beat yourself up for it. Right, right. (laughs) You have to just say always, am I doing the best that I can given the circumstances? Am I doing the best that I can with the number of spoons that I have today? And if you can say, yes, I am. If I had more spoons, I could do more, but I don't. So am I doing the best that I can with what I have? That's all you have to To say is, yep, I'm doing the best that I can with what I have. If you are, you're doing fabulous. You're doing great. So no shaming, (laughs) no blaming yourself for, for not doing what you could do on a day where you've got many, many, many more spoons. We truly hope that our podcast brings a little more understanding, helps you better articulate and reflect on your own experience with depression or better understand how to support someone else who is struggling. If this episode has been of comfort or value to you, know that there are hundreds of others like it in our archive, which you can easily find at our website, givingvoicetodepression.com. And remember, if you're struggling, speak up, even if it's hard. If someone else is struggling, take the time to listen 